now and soon can they hear us we can be seen let there be oh light God. they say can you hear me i can hear you hello what's hello. going on guys we are live with beastly thoughts episode 107 107 <laughs> every time Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Oh shit, I didn't I didn't label the podcast, so I'll do that while uh, <laughs> while we're doing that. And uh, Beastly, what have you been playing, man? Well, guys, I had kind of an interesting week. Um, uh, my neighbor's car got torched Friday. Yeah, I happen to live in a in a pretty decent neighborhood, but for some reason the the sky fell Friday. The whole world came to an end. Uh, at 4 a.m., I had a police officer wake me up and tell me that there was a smoldering heap outside, and whoever's car was next to it had also been affected. And unfortunately, it was my wife's car. And so right before that, I was playing The Division, a game that my wife and I had beaten. And we did enjoy that. Um, it it, it kind of put a stop to my gaming weekend, if you guys can understand. Uh, but we had a great time playing The Division. I ha I haven't really gotten into the dark zone at all. Actually, the last game I played was Rocket League basketball which is the best fucking game oh it's so good please that tell me you guys have tried that oh it's i so haven't good. tried this yet so this is rocket league it's not an addition to rocket league it's not a it's not it's an add-on it's a brand it's new game free. Yeah, it's, it's free, free on psn added, again it's added to the game for free oh it's added to the game so it's an add-on yeah, for rocket they, league they got and i'm sure they have hockey and stuff too they've added some new uh mechanics and dynamics but oh my god we played that uh I want to say the night before last for about an hour and a half. And it was just so frantic and insane and crazy and fun. More of what Rocket League is, it has the same appeal that Rocket League had when the game first released. It's just that kind of fun all over again. And it's just enough of a change to make it feel brand new. And I'm sorry, Rocket League, it just popped in my head and it kind of took over my talk of the division <laughs> because I probably had a little bit more fun playing Rocket League than the division. That's but awesome. Back to the division. Uh, back to the division, we did have a lot of fun playing that game. Uh, the end boss was a little underwhelming. If you guys haven't played that game, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But overall, uh, you know, the the loop, the loot loop that we had in the game kind of kept us uh, engaged. I did enjoy the weapons. I enjoyed the upgrades. By the end, I had a weapon that made me feel like a god, which I still have and I'm very proud of. Mm -hmm. It's it's a unique nice. enough it's a unique enough thing that I don't have any of the weapons my wife has. We've never found any of the same weapons, so I don't know how many they put in the game. But that does feel very unique, and it does make you want to go out into the world and try and try again for better and better loot. Uh, but that being said, I haven't gotten into the dark zone. It's something I'll probably end up. Oh, you haven't even into. been in the dark zone. No, we both hit level thirty, and uh, she was like, "We beat it." Uh, Time to move on to something else. And I was like, well, what okay. are we going to do? And she, she was like, uh, you know, I'm letting her decide because I'm married. That's just the way life goes now. <laughs> she said, okay. She said, either we're going to play Dark Souls 3 or we're going to play Metal Gear Solid 5. And I said, okay, well, you can pick. And she said, well, let's play Metal Gear. So that was oh. our plan. That was the plan. Uh, you know, I got a huge backlog of games to play. And at least we're doing it together. And that's helping me get through the back catalog. Because me, you guys know me. I got a ton of games. I'll get ready to play them. Then I'll look. And I'll see The Last of Us in my video game section. And I'll just click yeah. on it. And I can't see anything else. It's just great. It's great <laughs> hours and hours. So, um, yeah, that's that's been my week. Rocket League, uh, which is amazing. The basketball, if you haven't tried it, is totally free. Please play that. I'm going to check if you that guys out. Haven't, if you guys haven't bought Rocket League, like if you were unfortunate enough not to get it when it was free on PSN, download that game. It's worth every moment of your time. What's it cost? Basketball, 20 bucks. I think it's $20. 20 and bucks. It's, so it's totally, totally worth 20 bucks. Yeah. Check it absolutely. out. The way that the whole basketball arena works is there are hoops that have like kind of draped walls coming down the side going into the arena. But your car can go right through those walls, but the ball can't. So if you're shooting the ball toward the hoop, it's going to go up those translucent walls and go into the big giant hoop. Mm -hmm. in the, the center and but you can drive right through you can go inside of it if someone's making a goal and try to bounce their ball out it's just it's tons of fun it's hard for me to believe it took so long for a company to come up with something that fun and revolutionary and original but still very very uh familiar it's incredible uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to playing more of that and that's probably going to be my go-to game when i got time to kill this week uh you know jump in there and have a few matches there is also new modes that they've included i didn't get a chance to try them one was hockey and another one is just kind of like a mashup of different types of maps that you can try to play the game on 
I'll, I'll look forward to getting more information on that. If you guys have played that, please let us know in the comments what you think of the new Rocket League basketball. Absolutely. Nice. All right. So I did want to ask you a couple of questions about the division. Are you going to just stop here? You got no. You, do you have any drive to go into the end game of that? Go into the incursion. Go into the dark zone. Anything about it? Like, or are, I, have I, you finished the story I, and you're like, okay, I'm done with this game. I want to move on. I finished the story, and as soon as you beat the uh, the end boss, more um, more missions open up for you. We I don't think we're done with it. We definitely want to try the incursion. Uh, the fact of the matter is my wife is really driven in that game. The whole time, I told you guys last week, I was just like, I'm following you. I don't know what the hell is going on. Mm-hmm. She's really driven, and I think every aspect of that game she wants to uh, really experience. And, and having her with me and having a chick who's bad as hell in the game is such a driving force in my life. So, of course, I think we're going to get and try the incursions. Those are very similar to the raids, correct, in Destiny? Not really. Um, the incursion in... They only have one incursion right now. It's essentially you walk into an arena, take on 15 waves of enemy, and then fight a armored personnel car- carrier. Uh, I haven't done it myself, but that's how it's been explained to me. Uh, it sounds like a horde mode. That's yeah, really it's more it. like a horde mode, it feels like. Hmm. Or it, well, I, from what I understand, I, I haven't done it yet. I've, I really lost the drive to do Destiny or Division very early on. Well, see, the thing is with me, right, now that I've beaten the game, I feel like the main purpose of the game has been met. And until they introduce new things, like the same way that Destiny, once they release a new update or DLC, people go through that. They fight the boss. They do the raid. They do all the extra, you know, curricular missions. Yeah. And then it kind of dies out until they release something new to give people more, you know, of a want, need, and desire to get in there and try new weapons and all this stuff. So I'm thinking that naturally it's going to die down the same way with the Division. And when they inevitably release new stuff, That'll probably be the same pull for gamers that that, uh, Destiny has and pulls people back in. I really enjoyed going through and doing the missions. To me, it was really fun. One thing I'll say about um, the Division that really struck me is that I didn't feel like I was at the same place twice at all. It was crazy. I mean, going around that map, even though a lot of people say the map wasn't that big, I didn't go into like any place twice. I mean, every time I went somewhere and did a mission, it was a completely new place. Pregnant pause there. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> All right, so oh, I... Robbie, you told me that you got a ton of news lined up, so I'm gonna yep, just bypass sure. what I've been playing because everybody fucking knows what I've been playing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the last <we> do. <laughs> In fair, yes, of fair. course. <laughs> so let's hear it. Let's start the news. I, I think we got some really exciting stuff to talk about this week. I'm really actually pumped up. Yeah, especially Nintendo. We got a lot. A lot of Nintendo stuff. All right, are you going to bury the lead or are you going to jump right into it? That's what I want to know. I'm, I'm interested uh, to hear. What's the strategy for think? news here, Robbie? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm trying to have what I'm going to do. Briar won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Briar. Hold on. Now you sound like my wife. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. All right. <laughs> What do you guys think we should do? Should we just get him right into the big news, or should we start off with, you know, small kind of funny little stories? What do you think? Uh, well, we got to cover it all, so just go. Yeah. All right. Your choice. First Dealer's story choice. Of the day, esports organization ESL has banned Team YP, a competitive CSGO team, due to its U-Porn sponsorship. Did you guys hear about this? <laughs> I did hear about I this. Did. Yes. I did. What do you guys think? I mean, I, I was kind of like, hey, you know, the sponsorship is just a sponsor. It's like... Uh, why would you ban a team because they have a they have a sponsor? You know, like it's not like they were, had pictures of naked ladies on their jerseys or something. No, not at all. And even the team name, they didn't put Team U Porn. Like it's it was not Team YP. That's right. Exactly. They're yeah. not referencing porn in any way in pornography, even though they're sponsored by a porn site. They're not You're referencing porn that at quite, all. Quite a bit. You're saying porn quite a lot. Um, yes. The way, I, the, the way I feel, man, is. Any type of sponsor is just that, a sponsor. I don't think any organization should uh, retain the right to say what's ethical or not ethical when it comes to a sponsorship because a sponsor is exactly that. They're there to support you. They're there to fund your endeavors, and that's pretty much it. At the same time, they're getting their name out there. It's advertising. It's just advertising. I think that that the esports organization, uh, ESL, probably overstepped their boundaries. It'd be like if uh, this team was sponsored by Trump, and they said, we don't. 
We don't, we don't like Trump, Trump. Right. so they're kicked out. We're going like, to, what is that? You know, that's actually that's be, a good comparison. I, I, I like that. You yeah. know, I think that they probably overstepped their boundaries, and hopefully uh, Team U-Porn fights for what's right. Fight for their rights. Fight for the rights of people to uh, support any uh, organization and sponsor any organization and fap at the same time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'd love but to it, find out is while they had that sponsorship and while it, they were getting broadcast on the ESL, I, I would love to know the numbers that it drew in for the porn website. <laughs> I would love to see those numbers. <laughs> oh, my prior. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree with you guys. I don't think there was anything wrong with this sponsorship, and I think it's a little silly for them to ban them completely. Like, they even were... They were even agreeing to like remove a lot of ties to you porn. Like they were like, we'll change up our company branding if you want. Like they were very open to it, and they still said, nope, you're completely banned. Sorry. That's fucked. Yeah, well, I don't think that's okay. That's fucked. That's, yeah, that's really wrong. That's what happens when you when you uh, you have unelected officials in, in positions of power. They they act like tyrants or little angry children. They do what they want to do. I think any organization that should have a, a chair and they should have uh, people in positions of authority who can vote. You know, rather than have a small group of people who just say, no, I don't like it. I don't watch this at home. My kids don't watch it. What you're doing is it's just unfortunate. You, you guys agree? Absolutely. From what I heard, I agree. Really? All right, Robbie, what's the next on the uh, agenda? <laughs> it's all good. Uh, in software co-founders, John Romero and Adrian Carmack have started a Kickstarter for a brand new FPS project called Blackroom. So at this time, there isn't much known about this game, but it's the creators of, like, Doom. Mm -hmm. Go fund this shit right now, because this is going to be amazing. Like, I can guarantee it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, these guys have had projects post-Doom that weren't amazing. Yeah? You think so? Yeah. Like what? Uh, I can't remember. Daikatana, I think it was called, was a big one. Oh, I was just thinking like Quake and stuff. Like, I think a lot of what id Software has released has been super solid, like amazing games. Some of them have been not as good, but uh, still, I, 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 think I think a strong argument could be made that id Software was based on the technology, uh, and that the actual game design was pretty mediocre. You think so? Yeah, especially in the later years, like post Quake Two, Quake Three. I mean, Quake Three didn't even ship with a single player and then yeah. there's really nothing notable after that that they made i think i would agree with you on that i was more just thinking you know id software founded like doom like they were such an important studio but i mean i'm still excited to see what this game is because they're really talented and amazing people that are making a brand new game so yeah we'll have to see what turns out i would fund it there was some talent there for sure i i don't know that i don't i don't i, I i'm gonna wait on that I'm going to wait on that, definitely. My, 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 thought, my thought is this, right? Uh, we've got, you know, Yu Suzuki and other people uh, doing this this kind of Kickstarter. we got this game idea that we want people to indulge in, and then you find out that major companies are all also backing them. If it's truly an, an independent thing and they don't have the funds and Sony isn't involved and Microsoft isn't involved or other third parties aren't involved, then I can understand it. But at this point, especially with, like, Shinmu, how they – you know, once we get $4 million, uh, we're going to start working on this. And you realize that Sony's already backed it to a certain degree. It just yeah, kind of feels a, little dis it feels a little disingenuous sometimes. Now, I'm not saying that Carmack and uh, – forget the other guy's name. Um, John Romero. Romero. I should know that. I love zombie movies. But I'm not saying that that's what they're doing. But just in case, I'd like to know a little bit more before I put my money in, you know. I love Doom. I think Doom's awesome. But Briar's right; they have made other games uh, post Doom that haven't, you know, really been Doom. So yeah, they're, they're a track record over the last. Even id Software, and these guys weren't even id id, id Software for the last few years, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, they've left the studio since then. All right, what's next? Gearbox Software has confirmed that Borderlands Three is officially in production. Yeah, Easter that's exciting. Words the game will be featured in Gearbox's <laughs> newest game, Battleborn, which releases this week. So they awesome. know no one cares about Battleborn, and they just want to get Borderlands three out. There. I don't. I think there's a lot of excitement for Battleborn. Uh, Battleborn is a pretty sounds, interesting game. You don't. You don't think so, Robbie? I'm kind of awesome. excited for it, but it just seems like 
up until a couple of weeks ago, no one really knew what the game was. Like it just seems like people wanted Borderlands, but their beta I, I think be really helped out. Uh, their kinda, beta is awesome. Yeah, um, I I didn't love playing it on the PS3 because of the choppy frame rate, or PS4 sorry, um, because of the choppy frame rate. But I I can see that game having some legs. I like how there's there is a campaign, there is the multiplayer. I I think that game has some legs. Uh, Borderlands Three. I'm a big fan of the Borderlands series. I really like those games. I like looter shooters. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next step is for Borderlands because I I don't, you know, they, that environment has changed drastically since they released Borderlands two and even the Mm pre-sequel, you know, like they're now, they're now in a world where destiny and the division are like things, right? So what, what does Borderlands have to become? What is how do you evolve that game into something that feels current and fresh and, you know, can compete in the modern world? I, yeah, I that, can't wait to that's see very that. exciting. Yeah, well, Borderlands to me was kind of the start of this whole thing. It didn't have the same kind of online uh, infrastructure as Destiny or The Division, but it did have this amazing co-op type of experience that very few first-person shooters even today have been able to match. The stories that were told in very kind of subdued ways, that's one thing they can do to kind of push the envelope, give you a real tangible story that you can understand and follow, but at the same time give you an amazing multiplayer experience where you can go against you know, up to maybe 10 or 20 players and to me that's all they would have to do in the borderlands world now what i will say about um battleborn i didn't know what to expect out of it i'm not a moba type of guy Mm -hmm. but jumping into that and experiencing that world and understanding how they've structured the campaign and it has a lot of humor in it the gunplay felt good you know all these different abilities and skill trees that you get throughout the match borderlands is going to be the shit because battleborn is really awesome i'm looking forward to picking that game up as well yeah I've heard really sure. positive things about Battleborn. I was very surprised, but kind of wish I got in on that beta now. Damn, it really, I wish I'd played I, it. It's really good. I mean, uh, the beta had, I think, two two or three full missions that took about 45 minutes each. Yeah, it was. Wow. So, I mean, like, if you can imagine, like, a mini raid for Destiny, like, that's what they yeah. felt like. They were really, they were really cool. <clears throat> I liked, I liked that beta. I, the only thing I really didn't like about it was the frame rate on the PS4. Yeah, well, it was a little slow, wasn't it? It was a little, a little lag, choppy. A little, little, a little choppy. choppy. Yeah. On PC, though, I think it's a much better game. Mm-hmm. All right, who's next? Who's who's next at the punch bag? Who are we going to set them up? I'm going to knock them down. <laughs> Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo has patented, patented a new controller, most likely for its upcoming NX console. Is that the big U-looking thing, Robin? Yeah, the one that looks like the steering wheel, sort total of. total crap, no. No, it's a giant U from the alphabet, and I don't think that <laughs> Nintendo is even considering doing this. Just seeing the image alone, I was like, there's no way Nintendo is up for the ridicule that's going to happen if they release anything that looks like this. And we, we think that the, pre- and and we think the previous pat- little... I know the little previous controller that they, you know, leaked the little patent and the guy made it in his 3D printer. That controller is light years better than this U from the alphabet controller. I mean, so literally, they literally, basically, they they literally like hide what's what's valid about this patent by making them look stupid, right? It's like that's the U is the straw dog here. It's the it's the you know. It's just to distract your attention from whatever is really the technology here that they're trying to to patent. So, no, they're not going to release a U-shaped controller that looks like that. But what what you want to look at is the details of that patent to see what they're they're really trying to figure out here. All right. So I didn't get a chance to to go too deep, and maybe I should have. I saw the image, and I was like, "Oh hell no!" Yeah. You know that's what we that's what we say. It's very oh, common. It's no. very common when companies patent a device is to make it look ridiculous or to, you know, it's it doesn't matter what it looks like if the technology is, you know, we're we're trying to make a touch sensor for your phone that you know reads your thumbprint. The thing can look like you know the letter U. It doesn't really matter. They're what they're trying to patent is that little touch sensor, right? Mm, so touch, it touch. it's really yeah. you know it's a. You know, it, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's it's really what you want to do is dig in and see what see what they're trying what's to technology pass. They're yeah, what's to yeah, what's the hidden yeah. what's the hidden thing in there? All right. 
Yep. What's next, Robbie? I think the next little bit of news, Briar, is going to be exciting for the old Briar. Yes. Let's see, let's see if a tear comes from Briar's eyes today. <laughs> Yeah, let's see if Briar uh, gets a little nostalgia going on. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare is all but confirmed to be the name of 2016's Call of Duty game from Infinity Ward. A listing for the game was accidentally posted on the PlayStation Store before being taken down. Additionally, pre-order posters and information for the game have leaked, revealing the game's box art, release date of November 4th, and a legacy edition that will come with a remastered all before Modern Warfare. Holy shit, COD4 is being remastered. That's all we need to say. That is amazing. Oh, This is right. huge oh, news, man. COD4 was... This is big. It was a game changer. It literally was a game changer. And in my eyes, Modern Warfare 2 was damn good. It probably was better than COD4 in a lot of ways. But to be able to play COD4 again... Hopefully, it's changed enough that like people won't go in there and you, you won't see like flying soldiers and and invincible soldiers. Because the biggest problem with COD Four is that you can't go back and play that multiplayer hacked. anymore. It's yeah, completely it's hacked. hacked. You know, maybe one out of ten lobbies you get into aren't just a complete mess. You know, like you'll get in there and like all of a sudden you're you prestige ten times and then you'll get into the next lobby and you prestige down to zero again. It's like, what the fuck is even going on here? So I'm really looking forward to this just because I don't get to play COD 4 anymore, and it's really sad because that was a really cool and really it was a game changer game. It was an amazing game. And what it I don't still like about this so news cool. is from what I'm hearing is that you're not gonna be able to just buy this. You've got to buy mm -hmm. Infinite Warfare and then spend an extra twenty dollars to get to get this, like get the special edition. Yep. And that's a fucking bummer. With the legacy. <laughs> I don't want the new Infinite Warfare, <laughs> man. I don't even know what it is. I I have no interest in it at this point. Well, you guys see, aren't thing, excited for thing, Infinite Warfare at all? No. I, I, I can't be excited about something I don't know anything about. Yeah. It's like, you know, are you excited about your 60th birthday? I'm not 59. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, but I want that, I want a $20 COD 4 remaster, though, like sold separately. This is, this is the thing that I see potentially becoming a reality because of this. If people really flock out and they get this remaster, they get the Legacy Edition for Infinite Warfare, and they see that people are more in a fervor for the remastered, uh, uh, the remastered games, they may go back and start remastering some of the other CODs. Yeah, that would be those. incredible. To me, that would be really exciting if they re remastered them 20 bucks a pop. You get back into Modern Warfare 2, you're in a multiplayer ma match. There's no hacking. The game looks better than it ever did before. Give it to me, man. I don't even need yeah. it to look better. It can look the same. He's one of the same. I, <laughs> no and what I don't want, what I'm really scared this is going to be, is that whatever the gameplay mechanics of Infinite Warfare are, gonna they're just going to have the maps from COD 4, right? They're just going to oh, have the no. maps, and they're going to have weapon skins that look like the weapons from COD 4. I don't want the gameplay mechanics from Inf Infinite Warrior, Infinite Warfare inside COD 4. I want COD 4. Right, I want I, this is I want frags times three. I want like an M16 that's completely overpowered. I want one v ones on bog. I want the whole nine yards that COD Four was. Like I just want a carbon copy put on the Xbox One and the PS4. Yeah, and if it's anything less than that, too. I don't even know if I'm no interested. Why. I mean, it makes a lot of sense why they're doing it, right? Because people have been asking, we want a boots on the ground Call of Duty. We don't want a futuristic Call of Duty. And Infinity War was already too far in development. Like, this game is almost done. So they said, you know what? We're going to include a Modern Warfare remastered. We're going to do that for people who want that old school Call of Duty. But you're going to get, you know, the new innovative title at the same time. And I think this is awesome. Like, I honestly do. I'm very excited for the new game. And Call of Duty 4, just that makes me even more excited. Like, I cannot well, wait for this. this. Let me just say this. All around is good. This, this is more than likely for all of us, even Mr. Rabbit. We're all going to end up buying this new Call of Duty because it's just what we do. Uh, but the exciting part that we do know about is the potential for a full remaster of an old classic and possibly one of the best Call of Duty games of all time. Yeah. So that's the exciting part. I guess as time goes on, we'll learn more. I'm thinking that since this thing is all over the internet, that it is going to be a remaster versus uh, just a map with this new play mechanic and skins. That's yeah. what I'd hope for because everybody online and in the world right now is excited about the potential of having the actual remaster. So I'm thinking that that's probably what it's going to be. 
I hope and, so. And if they, I hope so. If they do, if they do that, they're going to make a lot of people happy. I mean, a lot of people yeah. are going to be extremely happy. People haven't played their Call of Duties for ten years. You know, yeah. eight nine years are going to be holy shit. This is this is what I grew up playing. This is classic. Let me show you how to play. You know, versus all the people Robbie's age jumping off walls and shit. Hey, um, you know what? I will say this: people asked for innovation Call of Duty for years. You got it, and now you want it to go back. Like, what do you want? I do we not want, understand the community. We, we want what we want when we want it. That's what we want. Here's what I'll I say. was. I, I will be honest here. I said Black Ops Two was the best game they ever made. I said Call of Duty Ghosts was the best game they ever made, and I said Advanced Warfare sucks. Period. Monkey. <laughs> so don't don't involve me in your gross generalizations, Robbie. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> no, okay. Damn right. Yeah. Set him straight, Brian. <laughs> Continuing on, guys. Sony has filed a trademark for a video game software known as the Sentinel. It is likely a first party new IP from one of the Sony's first party development studios. Can't wait. To see whatever this is. I love names. Yeah. Is it yes. from the X Men? <laughs> Holy shit. Well, I mean, I. That that kind of stuff, it's good to know that they're working. Somebody's making something, but until right. I find out some kind of detail, I'm like, well, the Sentinel, that sounds really nice. Show yeah. me. And it'll Show me. Probably yeah. be announced at E3. <laughs> Tell me this, something. It's just coming now, so we'll see it then, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. We'll see. Moving on, this news has been really big this week, and I think uh, this is more... Sure, things to come out, like... Maybe hardware isn't ready. Maybe they They're want not software. Ready to show to, it. They want well, they want more time for software development, so they actually have some launch titles as opposed to the last three con- consoles they lost launched. It's definitely first party games, guaranteed. I'm, it's their I'm, software. I'm thinking, yeah, there has to be a software issue because it's already been stated that they are planning on releasing this thing sometime Q1 2017. So the release date of the console still matches up. I'm thinking that at E3 they probably didn't have the games ready or any vertical slices of anything that looked. They wait till fucking May to say, hey, we're not going to have it at E3. Well, Sorry. What do you think happened here? Do you think it got, it's delayed? Do you think, like, you know, are they waiting for, like, newer, fresher things to come out? Like, maybe hardware isn't ready. Maybe they want software. To to, they, want, well, they want more time for software development, so they actually have some launch titles as opposed to the last three con- consoles they lost. Launch. It's definitely first party games. Guaranteed. I'm, it's their I'm, software. I'm thinking, yeah, there has to be a software issue because it's already been stated that they are planning on releasing this thing sometime Q1 2017. So the release date of the console still matches up. I'm thinking that at E3, they probably didn't have the games ready or any vertical slices of anything that looked good enough to compete with the, the current generation of console gaming. And they don't want people to immediately be let down and say, fuck Nintendo again before their new console even comes out. I think that when they show something, they want it to be heads and shoulders better than what we're seeing now. I think, that, well, at least my opinion of what Nintendo would want is for them to show a game, a Zelda, a Metroid, a Mario game that looks on par better than what we're seeing with the PlayStation 4 right now. And more than likely, they, they just don't have anything ready for E3. I don't understand how this thing is less than a year away and you are not showing it at E3 because they're saying this fall they're going to bring it out, they're going to announce the NX, they're going to talk about the hardware and everything. This is such a missed opportunity. This is a huge mistake for them. I honestly believe that. I cannot believe they are skipping E3. Like the, they're the not funny... even going to be doing a direct for it. I don't understand how they are doing this. Like We're screaming at you. Just do a conference. That's all you need to do. Well, I just don't know. All, all I know is Nintendo's had a really rough year. Um, news just came out, I believe, yesterday that PlayStation uh, had a $13 billion um, uh, financial statement for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2016. God and last damn, year... That's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and PSN, PlayStation Network, made more money than Nintendo as an entire company. PlayStation, yep. Network, PlayStation Network made $4.9 billion last year. Nintendo as an entire company made $4.6 I just so, hope Nintendo knows what they're doing. Like, what, I am what, so nervous right now for them. Like, I just well, really hope they're confident because not going to E3 shows me they are not confident in this thing. And that really well, scares me. It's kind of scary. I, it would have to be scary if you consider what's happening, the, the climate of gaming right now. Sony is getting ready to uh, release PlayStation VR. They're gearing up for PlayStation 4K, which I think is going to be a huge success. Anything around that, it's like, you know, you don't want to release your movie in indie on the same week that Star Wars comes out. You know, yeah. it's, it'll be yeah. a nightmare. And Nintendo has a really kind of lackluster 
air, I mean, just the air around Nintendo right now is just kind of lacking. And so they need to carve out their own area of time to release their games, to show their games, to show their console. What's better than the holiday to- season, though? I mean, I, I, I really do think it's a software thing because I... Like, what's better than releasing a new Nintendo console at a ho- on a holiday season? Like, that's yeah. a huge... Like, you, you get lines going around the block for that kind of thing. Well, you know? Yeah, in the past. Well, you used past. to, anyway, you know? Yeah. I don't know, man. It's got to be software. Like, they must be trying to get a launch lineup going because... I agree. Yeah. I mean, but that- some people have speculated it's because they don't want to go up against the PS4 Neo, but, I mean, come on. That's not real. That. The PS4 so. Neo, I think, is going to eat their free lunch here. They they are, you know, because like, there's nothing there's nothing else holiday, right? Even if Xbox One releases like a slim Xbox One, it's much more compelling to get a PS Neo that has actually upgraded hardware in it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I think Nintendo really lost an opportunity here. Going into the holiday season, they could have had a really strong holiday season, a really strong they have launch. Nothing launching in March, too. you know, you're not getting that holiday gift sales. You're not getting any of that. It's it so silly. it's really it's kind of daunting to look at the reality that is Nintendo right now, Briar. You and I are around the same age group. What does Nintendo really have? They've got five or six very well known franchises that, for the most part, a lot of people are getting tired of. They got to have a launch lineup that really speaks to the modern gamer. They got to have a launch lineup that brings back Nintendo fans who lost their respect for what Nintendo is now. They've got to just go back in and make a completely new recipe and present an entirely new pie to the gamers. And and Microsoft has nothing now, so they're whatever they plan on doing at E3 better be big. The only one I see right now just shooting for the fucking sky is Sony. They've got so much going on. Yeah. And it has to be daunting for Nintendo at this point, you know? It has to be. I, think oh, I, want, I want them to be successful. I'm buying the NX. I do too. I'll have my, I mean, I'm going to have it no matter what because I do love Nintendo IPs. But as a company, they've got to restructure so much. They've got so many things that they've tried to stick with through, you know, we're old school. This is the way we've always done it. And it hasn't really uh, translated well into dollars and cents for the company in the past few years. They're going to have to go back, double down, and change so many facets of the way they run their company to compete with the way Sony and Microsoft are doing it now. Well, they need I to get third-party support. They need a platform that isn't completely, like, you know, completely different than everything else so that they can get, you know, the Call of Duties, the Destinies, like these big franchises over there, and then also have the selling point that we have Mario, we have Zelda, we have Metroid, you know? Yeah. Like, how cool is that console if it's That's got awesome. all of that stuff? Right, it's the best console out there, in my opinion. Would, they, right? would, like, would, they got yeah, the best absolutely. first-party software. Period. Like you can't, you can't dispute that. Uh, you you can dispute it, but uh, it'd it's be a really, really hard awesome. argument to win. You know exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Mario Maker. I think is one of the best games that came out last year, and it was on a console that nobody had. Yeah. Yeah. I think 2016 is them hitting the reset button. Like they don't have anything for this year. Like. Beastly, I agree with you completely. I think they are just really looking at their company. They're like, we need to change a lot of what we're doing. We need to completely change our game plan for an X. Like, let's just take a year off and let's really just nail this thing home. Like, that's... Uh, You know what? I'd rather them release it in 2017 if they're really going to put in all the hard work and development that needs to go into these games to make them phenomenal. Nintendo is very well They got to come out... They got to come out with a double barrel Swinging. shotgun just they gotta, like, they gotta go hard. yeah they got to like really they got to go hard and see nintendo they've got to come you know with the advertising they've got to come they've got to be everywhere yeah. for people to really see nintendo the way we used to when we were young yeah and you now know what else is like if they launch the this if, wake them up if they launch this holiday season right and they don't have the new call of duty on there they don't have destiny on there they don't have all these you know like tomb raiders or you know all these multi platform games like, that's a major, sh- you know, that's, like, everybody's going to see that and be like, oh, this is the same old Nintendo. I'm not buying this. It comes with yep, yep. a Zelda game, yep. a Pokemon game, and that's Some it. Some crazy controller, yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So maybe maybe wait until March. They're trying to get third-party developers on board. Hey, you know, develop that Destiny game for our platform. Develop, develop Call of Duty for our platform so that when they do launch, they have Zelda, they have Pokemon, they got Call Bayonetta. of Duty. They got, yeah, they got like a whole, they got a real launch lineup that can just compete right off the bat, you know, because they're launching into like midstream. 
I don't know, man. It's tough. It's a tough one for Nintendo right now. Yeah. But oh, they could knock it out of the park. They know what they're doing. They could knock it out of the park. They if, they, they got- if they had a Nintendo store that you could pay a $10 monthly subscription fee and pay all play all the old Nintendo games... It's over. Yeah, sell a That's, billion. <laughs> sell a billion it's of those over. things. Briar <laughs> Rabbit, <laughs> send in a resume to Nintendo. You were brilliant, man. I'm serious, yeah. man. Imagine it'd be like Nintendo's Netflix. You can play the whole Nintendo and Super Nintendo, uh-huh. and maybe Nintendo 64 library. Oh god, I wouldn't play my I wouldn't play my PlayStation 4 no more. It'd be oh over. my god, and it, it, it you could the same subscription also went to your handheld, so you oh, can play those games oh. on your handheld too. This is Holy too good, man. Because you know shit. those yeah, NES this games. Is crazy. Oh my god, it would be the best. You're pissing me off right now, bro. Because Fucking it's like, Nintendo, this is do a it. No brainer. This is <laughs> a no brainer. Nintendo should do that. This is and Nintendo. Like, we scream at them. We're like, we know what you need to do. Just do it, and they just, just do don't. it. Just do why it. don't they? Don't let your dreams you guys, be dreams. Listen, guys. <laughs> we, look, one loud voice can change the world. I'm talking to you, the viewer. Go to Twitter. Tweet at Nintendo and tell them this is what we need. We need an annual forty nine ninety nine subscription that allows us to the back catalog to have access to the back catalog of Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Nintendo sixty four, and possibly even GameCube. What's tell the most you would pay? What What's the most you would pay? Oh, the most I would pay for that? Yeah, I pay. I pay a hundred bucks a year. Oh, that's, 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 that's only that's only two games, man. It's only that's two only games. Two, that's, that's only two games, Robbie. I'm sorry, but if you have access to yeah. thousands of games, please, that's a wrap. It's over. Give it to me for eighty dollars if I pay for the whole year at once. Yep. You got access to all their back catalog because one thing Nintendo's always been about is their back catalog and yeah. their ability to play their older uh, games on newer consoles. Do so, you think they'll have an Xbox Live slash PSN? Service? They have to. They have to, right? They have to. They you think, have it'll, to. Do you think well, they'll charge for it? Well, check it out. PSN. They know that PlayStation Network made more money than their whole the whole right. company. You think they'll so charge for big, it though? Hey, you think they will? Yeah, they're, they're going to have to. Uh, you know, it's 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 good and noble to try not to do that initially. But, you know, at the end of the day, the, the more people pay for this kind of service, the better kind of service they're going to get. And uh, they see what it's a trend. Microsoft started it and PlayStation jumped on. And now Nintendo's going to have to do something. It just It's the way of the world. It's all God, about the I hope they listen. I hope they do this right. God, they need to be watching this damn podcast right they now. We've been telling them for the last two do. years how to make this right, goddamn that's like the best, <laughs> We're running that the company. Be that would be the best online infrastructure of anything that I'd play. I would I'd be up like, oh, man. I'd be playing so many of those old Nintendo games that I haven't oh, played in God. forever. And then... If they could get like old Capcom games, old Konami yeah. games, oh man, that shit. Imagine would be if they beautiful. just created a whole new subsection. What of, happened like, to you, Nintendo? Cluster. You used to be beautiful. Yeah, ugly bitch. <laughs> you ugly bitch. You used to be stunning. Yeah. All right, what's next? What's next? <laughs> what's next, Robbie? Let me see. Read the the Legend of story, Zelda. The Legend of Zelda has been delayed until 2017 alongside the announcement of an NX version of the game. It will be the only playable game from Nintendo at this year's E3. The Wii U will be the only playable version of the game. So It's going to be a they're, cross. They're, it's going to be like a Twilight Princess, right? Isn't that what they Just do like Twilight, Twilight Princess. Princess. More, I hope it's more of a difference, though, because a lot of people said that the, um, the GameCube version of Twilight Princess was actually better than the Wii version of the game. So if it's if it's that kind of uh, comparison, then it's going to make the NX look bad. People learn from that. Uh, if the NX version looks stunningly different, just a stark contrast to what we see on the Wii U, people will be really excited about it. I think I don't care as long as they work hard and make the game an amazing game. Nintendo's known for making some of the best games, so my yeah. faith in them is in that facet of the company. Yeah. But if they're going to take the time and, and really make this NX stand out. And make people know from jump, this is as powerful as what you're playing at home. This is as powerful as that PlayStation Neo. This thing is more powerful than that Xbox One. And we got Mario, we got Kid Icarus, we got Zelda, we got Metro, we got Donkey Kong, the new Donkey Kong Country Kong. People will just fly to it. I mean, they just got to be smart about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we're telling Absolutely. them what to do. All they have to do is watch the podcast. Like They'll have their company planned down. Uh, the next little article, I believe it probably should be sooner, but the Wii U could end production by March 2018, according to Nintendo CEO. March 2018, I think that might be a little... It's a little short for people who are just really into Nintendo, but what else do you got? Realistically, you see, 
Well, if you can play games. all those games on the NX, then... Yeah, absolutely. For just a low you know? monthly fee. <laughs> well, the, the Nintendo uh, Wii U, I mean, even if we look at games that just, just released like Star Fox, to me, Star Fox looks like crap. It looks like a game I do. I am not interested in playing a game that looks like that yeah, on a modern neither. console. You know, I, I have friends who have it. The control scheme is very counterintuitive and counterproductive to playing the game. I'm just, ah, it, to me, I feel like the Wii U has it, its hidden gems, you know, just in a huge beach of you sand. You and far gotta, between. Yeah, you've yeah. got to find them, you know? It's very yeah. hard to find them. Do you guys think uh, if they in production on the Wii U, uh, 2018 is too early? When did it release? 2012? No. Yeah, fall 2012. Really? Yeah. yeah that was. long? Yep. Yeah, That's well, the PS4 it. and the Xbox One released 2013, so. Wow. Yeah, yeah year before that. It's, Time flies when you're having fun, Brian. Sometimes when you're not doing anything, it still flies. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that'll be six years of a lifespan. I think that they could probably end it next year if they're, you know, smart about it. It's going to be hard for them to still support that thing and then focus on the NX. Nobody really, I mean, in my opinion, really cares about the, the Wii U. We don't care about the Wii U anymore. You're totally right. Like, no one does. Everyone wants to see NX. We're ready to move on. And they need to be ready, too. They need to show this thing. And that's why not showing it at E3 is a huge mistake in my mind. Get it's kind of like an original out. Xbox situation where they just, like, cut cut and run. Mm-hmm. 360 is anything. Yeah. yeah. It worked out for them, though, you know? I think they need yeah. to this time. Yeah. So this new leak, a new leak of Microsoft's internal production notes has revealed an Xbox One second generation second generation console is in development and in mass de- development right now. So what do you guys think about that? Xbox One second generation? Xbox what are we One thinking? Two? We're thinking Slim, right? Xbox Slim? Yeah. I don't now, know. There has I to be. So. This is the thing, right? Right now is around the time that all the slim generation, the slim consoles come yeah. during the generation. So we should be expecting like the PlayStation Neo to look slightly different than the PlayStation Four and whatever Xbox is working on now to definitely be smaller than what we have, you know, on our entertainment centers. But if this is just a slim with the same internals as the Xbox One, it's going to be a disaster for Microsoft. It's going to be a disaster. Now, if it's just a slim and they reduce the cost of it and they drop it down to two forty nine, that'll help them with sales. But yeah. if it's a slim and the PlayStation Neo comes out and is more powerful than the PlayStation that we have today, nobody is going to pick this thing. Nobody Xbox is. Xbox One is going to be further behind in power as it'll well. It'll be it'll be in third place. Sony PlayStation Four and Neo will be number one. PlayStation Four will be number two, and then Xbox One will be number three, unless the NX I, takes I can see one. I can see Xbox here. Make it a slim, putting it out two fifty. You know, get it nice and cheap, uh, and then starting if if they haven't already, like be really going on the next version of Xbox because you know they have they have really good sales on the Xbox One. You know, mm-hmm. they, it's sold well, better than million. the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. It's sold better than the twenty million original Xbox. Uh, but it's seen as a failure for so, just because. When you compare it to the PlayStation Four, I wouldn't be surprised to see him see him get into that next generation a little earlier. You think when you say a little earlier, around what year are you talking? If they were to go along with this plan, what year do you think? I wouldn't be be surprised to see it like start hearing rumors about it next year. Maybe see it released in twenty eighteen. That's that's, that's, next uh, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the NX is coming. If Microsoft does that, then they're going to put the NX exactly where the Wii U is right now. <laughs> It'll be uh, an eighth generation console in the midst of the ninth generation. Uh, <laughs> I just, it's it's really a, a, a tumultuous situation that Nintendo and Microsoft is in because all this momentum is behind that PlayStation. 40 million plus, you know, new hardware, VR. I just hope Microsoft does something to put them at the same level with Sony when it comes to third parties. If they can do that, and they can they can potentially change the landscape of this this console war because twenty million versus forty million, you're right, it does make them look pretty bad. Yeah. Even though the Xbox One is selling like hotcakes. Definitely. Mm. All right. This four K monitor makes this four K, man, I'm too old to be looking at these little tiny letters. Yeah, you get some spectacles. Spectacles. <laughs> <laughs> <It'll be a laughs> monocle. My, my eyes are spectacles right now. From software director Hideki like, Come on, Hidetaka Miyazaki. 
Nailed it. Studio, Nailed it. <laughs> has revealed that Dark Souls is over. The studio has already started working on a brand new IP, and they do not have any plans to de- develop future Soul type games. So they're done with the Souls games. Like this is like, brand new. Not surprising to me. They made five. I, I think they're ready to move on. There's no way. They they probably won't make it, but Dark Souls is definitely not over. Come on. Well, in their eyes. That's, yeah, that's I, like. That's Wait, like, does that mean they won't make any more games like this? Like there will be no Bloodborne too? No Bloodborne. Yeah, like they're saying no Soul type games at all. Like that's wow. they're done with. That's so. That's, that's such a. a that's a dumb decision. <laughs> that's a <crock laughs> them. They're ready to move on. Yeah. You know what, man? You know what? How many when times did that, you hear uh, hit, hit, uh, the Metal Gear, Gear Solid guy Metal say Gear, that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're ready Kojima. to move on. But Metal Gear Solid the guys in charge of the money are like, oh, no, sir. <laughs> you will You're keep making, making these Gear. games. <laughs> it's making us money. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on now. It's like if anyone honestly believes that Uncharted is gone now and over, after A Thief's End, you've lost your mind. It's one of the biggest cash cows for Sony. If you believe at all that From Software is done making the Souls games, the games that made them who they are. Yeah, I think say, they are. When no. you say, yeah, but that's what they're counting on, Robbie. And let me tell you why they're counting on that. See, they know the young, impressionable minds. Uh, they say that to young people. They're like, oh, man, From Software, is they're, they're going to be making a new game where you're a fucking gorilla running around throwing uh, bananas at <laughs> then people. Then they announced right? Dark Souls 4 and, and, and everybody loses their out, fucking shit. Robbie throwing <laughs> shit. Ah, I can't believe it. They lied to us and buying this game as soon as it comes out. There's no way in hell that Dark Souls is going to be. Any, it is probably soon. a good time to slow down on Take the Dark break? Souls. Yeah. yeah, totally a good Definitely. time, right? You don't want to wear, you don't want a Guitar Hero this franchise, yeah. right? Absolutely. No. Take a break, slow it down, release a couple other Probably games, here. but you're going to see Dark Souls Four, and you're going to see Bloodborne oh, too. <laughs> like, it's not no from software. From it. software is done with that series, but I think someone else no, should definitely make us. A- I'd be surprised. <laughs> it's going to be from software. Yeah, it's going to be from software. <laughs> He's saying they're moving on. Okay. Look, 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 Jay-Z retired from rapping 400 years ago, okay? Listen, let me explain <laughs> something to you. From Software makes the best Souls games. From Software, they they, that's what they are masters at. They've cultivated that atmosphere. They're not going to pass it over to the guys who, you know, make Gears of War or something. They're, they're saying they, they're ready to move on, though. Yep. And they're so already they're, working on something that's not Dark Souls related. And they're Dark gonna Souls back. kart racing. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. Still waiting for Uncharted kart racing, so that could happen after Uncharted well, Four. Well, I, I think Briar and our, our we're in the same mind state here that this is definitely not going to end anytime soon. I think we we also agree that they're probably going to take three or four years. Oh yeah, to, to perfect take time a break, for a break and maybe bring it out maybe on the next generation of uh, consoles. But this is definitely not going to not going to end. Robbie, I'll talk to you again when you turn eighteen. Uh, you said four years, right? All right, eighteen. <laughs> All right. Fuck. <laughs> Shut up, Gorilla uh, Noggin. Uh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. I'm going to throw a banana at you. Uh, PlayStation 4 has sold over 40 million units world- worldwide. Recent sales numbers indicate that PlayStation 4 sales are actually accelerating at an even faster pace compared to its previous years. Holy crap. They're I, hauling ass. I They're call doing it. good with that PS4, man. Holy shit. Hey, wait. What do you think is going to happen because of this Neo announcement? You think it's going to slow down, or you think you think it's going to go faster? I think it'll slow down at least temporarily until the Neo is released. Because who would buy a PlayStation Four right now, right? Well, I think the problem is because people who don't keep in touch with the news, they don't know about this upgraded Neo console. Yeah, like you know the normal mom and pop consumers, they don't know about this thing yet. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Ask me if you ask me. Normal people my age don't even know. I talk to guys. They can tell me every person in the NFL social security number. But if I tell them that there's a new PlayStation coming out, they're like, what are you talking about? A lot of people oh, have no clue. So they go out <laughs> and they buy whatever's there. And it is kind of the thing to do right now is buy a PlayStation 4. I think that when the NX comes yeah. out or the Neo is going to be better suited for VR, the VR craze is going to hit the world. 4K Blu-ray, 4K crazy. Netflix. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah. This is going to be the best-selling console of all time. Cool. I said it before it came out. I said it before it came out. We, but you guys go back and find that Beastly Thoughts episode where Beastly called it. Cause I That's going to take a while to find. <laughs> <laughs> you got to look at all 160 episodes to oh find my, out. Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'll let Briar do that. Briar, mm-hmm. get on it. <laughs> Samsung, is re- Samsung is reportedly developing a brand new virtual reality headset closer to the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. 
Ooh, that's exciting. Good for them. I actually looked at a poll yesterday, and uh, I'm trying to remember all the numbers, but I can't. But the highest uh, VR headset that people were looking forward to was PlayStation VR at 39%. Next was the HTC Vive, and then the Oculus Rift, and then like the Samsung Gear, and then another was like other. But more people are looking forward to PlayStation VR, so it looks like this trend is going to continue. The only one that's some. affordable. Yeah, well, I can either buy uh, HTC Vive or I can pay my rent for the next two months. Yeah. So you know, it's a it's a financial decision to buy those things. So those are big nuts to crack. Hey man, I see you got a VR headset, but what happened to your car? <laughs> I don't need you that know? shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can drive to work with my VR. I can headset. travel to Mars <laughs> now. <laughs> A Microsoft Insider says there will be a brand new Xbox One console unveiled at E3, as well as a new controller, possibly a new iteration of the Elite Xbox One. We lost Robbie, I think. Okay, well, I was hoping it wasn't me this time. <laughs> All right. So, because I was looking at you, I was like, Brian, it looks like he's in real time. <laughs> Robbie's just doing this shit, so I didn't know what was going on. So what do you think about that? Uh, Microsoft Insider stating that there will be a new Xbox One console revealed this year at E3. You think it's a possibility, or you think yeah, it's likely? I, I think it's going to be an Xbox, like a slim Xbox One. What are, the, what are the chances? What do you think the chances are that this new Xbox One will have improved hardware? Do you think it's just going to be a visual aesthetic and smaller chips? Not yet. That's going to be later down the road. I think this is definitely back. a slim. What? I was here the whole time. No. Oh, I know. You just... <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever played Quantum Break? It looked like one of those sections <laughs> where time stops. <sighs> Someone's on Pornhub taking up the bandwidth. Oh, well. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think this is very likely. Um, I, I really just, personally, I hope that when they do reveal this thing, it has some kind of draw other than just being a visually more pleasing Xbox One. Smaller smaller form factor i want it to be able to to go head to head i like the competition i you know i want them to be able to say this thing will compete with whatever sony's making next we've got new gpu in there that'll make me interested and say hell i'm i might have to buy one of these motherfuckers too you know i like that kind of uh, camaraderie and competitive competitiveness between these companies it drives it drives me to want to spend my money i don't want yeah. to see microsoft just say this is just the original Xbox One. Now it's just the size of an uh, N-Gage phone. I don't want that. I want this thing to just be competitive. I want them to be fighting tooth and nail. That's what drives consumers to go out and support these companies. They know PlayStation's working on something more powerful. Robbie, stop it's... typing. Sorry. <laughs> Damn it, Robbie. I forgot to mute my mic. Okay. <laughs> Robbie types with like hammers or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's interesting news. Um what do you think of this new uh, controller, uh, a new iteration of the Elite controller? Do you guys have the Elite? Uh, no, no, I want to get it. I want it, too. Uh, if I played my Xbox more, frankly, I would get it right now. But I just don't play my Xbox that much. Mm. Um, but that controller Playing with is your Wii U awesome. too much, right? Mm -hmm. a new, yeah. a new, what can they do yeah. now to a actually add new functions to the Elite controller? Because that thing has like more functions and scuff. Yeah, I've heard wow. some people don't like the tension on the sticks. Tefty was telling me that. Um, I've heard that there's some issues with the uh, buttons on the back. Like, you place the controller down and it activates the buttons. I've heard like, the paddles are in a weird place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they could, they could, they could change, change it up a, a few bit. things. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess well, we'll, we'll find out. Like very new soon. designs. Like, or will this actually be like big improvements? Will this be like, like neon just... yellow now? Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm thinking. Like new colors or something. It I could don't be. Know. Could be more than that. But, yeah. All right. So our our last little bit of news for the day is EA has announced that the next Battlefield game will be unveiled on Friday, May 6th at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. New Battlefield. Very interesting to see if this is World War One and how that looks against Call of Duty Infinite Warfare being let set me just, years let, in the future. Let me just say this. The only Battlefield that I've ever liked is Star Wars Battlefront. So I don't care about this one. <laughs> okay. Wow. Shots fired. It's true. It's true. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people who really enjoy Battlefield. It's just never been the shooter for me, you know. Every now and then you come across a control mechanic or a control scheme or just the way that the gunplay feels, and it just doesn't suit your palette. And Battlefield is that one. Briar and I actually were talking about it the same day. This is like two years ago when we jumped into the Beastly Thoughts crew and we were all playing together. And it was like, Battlefield just feels like crap. I just don't like it. I think it comes from 
where we came from too. We were playing a lot of Call of Duty at the time. Battlefield yeah. is a much slower pace game. It doesn't feel as dynamic. You know, now with you know games like Destiny and you know like even feeling even faster. Uh, the division feels better than that to me too. Uh, I mean, just, can I just raise my hand? So I, like that, <laughs> so I do. That was great. I've always liked Battlefield a lot. I like Battlefield Four. I had fun with it. It took me a long time to get used to the controls. Um, and one of those broken sticks, you know. What's that? I, I, when I was broke as dicks. Yeah. I don't yeah, mind um, the, the campaign as much. I just feel like when I go into the multiplayer, there are people who understand the dynamic of the way the we- weapons work a lot better than I do. Yeah. You know, when you go out there in multiplayer and you try to shoot someone and then all of a sudden you're firing like two feet above their head and you're like, what the hell's going on? I just never understood that and it just never really resonated there is, with me. There's a higher skill gap, I think, between like a That's good it. Call of Duty player and a bad Call of Duty player. The skill gap is... You know, it's it's there, but it's narrower than in Battlefield, where it's 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 gargantuan. Definitely, mm. yeah. Okay. Battlefield, I feel like you have to have much better aim too. Like it's just longer engagements and yeah, yeah it's further away, a more realistic game. But I, I would, really enjoy both. I wouldn't mind putting you know playing some Battlefield Hardline. You know, I got it on Xbox One and PS4. I like the campaigns, but um, yeah. it's just oh, that control and that multiplayer makes me just want to really shoot myself. But that's the news for this week's Beastly Thoughts. And that's I a lot really of news. Enjoy- yeah, Robbie, you've been going for Did you sleep this week, or were you just constantly on, on Google? Or porn no, hub? I was awake all night every night. At were you, hub. Yeah. you all no, I think, night. I know you're on U-Porn, right? U-P- Watching that VR porn. Night. Yes, I was doing that. You guys see Deadpool? He's got his masturbation shoes on. His masturbation Crocs on. You didn't see that, Deadpool? Oh, yeah. I, I fucking nearly shit myself when he's oh my god, those I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jesus, uh, that's not a spoiler, that's by good. the way. That's, that's, <laughs> I think I've seen that in the trailer. Just because uh, he says so doesn't make it true. <laughs> uh, did you guys get to see that movie? You said you haven't seen it, Robbie. No, I it's out on home it. video like, now. Deadpool. I was oh supposed to see God. with a friend in theaters, but it just didn't happen. Yeah, never it's me good. It's pretty bitch. funny, it's man. So, like it's it's, it's really good. It's so it's so good to me. That might be what, for Kate is definitely her favorite superhero movie of all time. It's filmed in Canada too. Why not? Better than Guardians it. of the Galaxy. I haven't seen that. Oh. I have it on Blu-ray. Oh, that's it's a good movie. movie. That's really good. really Guardians of the Galaxy is is that better than the Avengers? Surprisingly, I think it is. It I think it's a lot better than the Avengers. I don't really? care for the Avengers at all. I thought it was. Boring, to be honest. Yeah, I think Guardians like, of the like Galaxy it. was really good. Wow, I got it on Blu-ray. Never seen it. Um, really? But yeah, Deadpool was just phenomenal to me. That that fourth wall just kept shattering, man, and it, yeah. it just made my day to see him, the little action figure, you know, with the big so walls cool. and yeah. the mouth sewed up, all that stuff that they referred to, and that that movie was really, really awesome. Yeah. I got Deadpool on PS4, and Kate beat it, and I still haven't played it. Ooh. I didn't even know they because made a the game. Yeah, Deadpool. <laughs> It's on seventh generation, but they remastered it for PlayStation Four and oh, Xbox One. Okay. I got that a few, two, three weeks ago, and of course she played it and beat it. And I, I still heard it's it. like just okay. What do you think of it? She loved it. Uh, she said at the very end of the game, the difficulty went from one to three hundred. I that hate when to do that. Oh. Yeah, she said that it was just so. She was really pissed off for probably. It's not fun at that point. Two it's to just three like, hours. Why? And I watched her play it for a while, you know, out of the corner of my eye. And I went to bed, and she told me the next morning she was up till 2 or 3 in the morning, and she finally beat it. So, one of those situations. Yeah. Them situations. Yeah. Well, guys, I, I'm going to have to call it. I got some things I got to do. I actually have a, a very close friend of mine in the hospital, believe it or not, on life support. Yeah. Um, and uh, I told you guys pre-show I got to go p- pick up some friends and family. We're going to go up there and see him. All right. So all the positive feelings that you guys can gather, send them my way. I got That's a right. best for you. You know, I got a, a friend and basically a brother who's fighting for his life right now. And not, I want to go there and, and be there and support him. I hope everything turns out for the best. All right. Thanks, man. It should. You know, God is good all the time. We'll be thinking of you. Thanks, Robbie. Think, think of you. me in, a, in, in the most sexual way you can, Robbie. I always no, do. Just love. <laughs> <laughs> no change. No change. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? They tell you when you're going to speak in public topic. to a, to uh, picture your your uh, your audience <laughs> naked. I just picture yeah. be- beastly naked, <laughs> and I'm like, time. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. 
<laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for this show. Thank you very much for watching. If you missed out on any of it or if you missed a previous episode, you can check it out on my channel or you can check it out on Robbie's channel. Right, Robbie, are you still posting these? Yeah, I've forgotten to, but I okay. probably will this week. And Hopefully. you can check them out on Beastly Gamers channel. Look them up on for YouTube. Sure. Uh, Beastly, you're also doing news videos on a daily basis. Uh, some yes. good ones this week, too, I noticed. Thank you. Yep. And uh, I think that's going to do it. Anybody else got anything they want to say? I love nope. you all. Positivity. Bye, Live long and prosper, my Hashtag friends. Hashtag Pope Bear. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Hi, where, did I, where did I find?